<laughs> All right, are we ready? Yes. <laughs> we yeah, are. we're ready. We're ready. Here we are once again. Over. We are the yeah. I thought we oh, were ready. Richard, you ruined <laughs> it. We weren't. And take number nine. Close my eyes first. Here we are again. We are the vinyl community, Gunkles, and uh, you know what we didn't do? We didn't. Well, wait a minute. We still have. Never mind. We still have the Violent Femmes. Um, I'm like we never did put our top fives in the, but I forgot we haven't done the Violent Femmes yet. <laughs> Yeah. Please leave that. <laughs> we are the vital community gunkles and we are gradually losing our minds, but that's all right because we we, we lost him a long time ago. He is Robert Fithin. <laughs> Here we are again. We are Richard did it again. <laughs> here we are again. We are the vinyl community gunkles. And we are here to um Review. I forgot the word review. <laughs> we are here to review the album Timbuk 3 or Totem 3. <laughs> Future's so bright, I got to wear shades. I love that one. Uh, Totem 3 from the uh, Master Musicians of Bu Bukaki. Bukaki. From 2011. Bukaki. Coming up, we will rank the albums from the Violent Femmes and rank the music with our tops and bottoms of 1984. But today, it's all about Bukaki. <laughs> it's all about Bukaki. <laughs> As it should be. We're spreading the word. That's the that's channel we rip off. That's not us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was... So beautiful. Hi. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so we're going to review first. the album. Um, yeah. What are we doing? So, this yeah, is this, the album. That's the album, and... Um, I love the cover art, first of all. Um, yeah. It's, uh, you know, got snakes intertwined and skeletons and everything. And this is, the, I guess, their third album because it's uh, Totem 3. Well, it's not like their the... third album. They have a lot of albums. Okay, so uh, they are like the, the Traveling Wilburys and the Vibe and Femmes, where the third thing is not their third album. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I thought that it sounded... Uh, first of all, I thought they were from Japan. And they're not. They're from Seattle. So, you know, and this album is available in the U.S. And I thought it was only a Japanese import and all that. I was wrong about so many things. But uh, the album is a lot of instrumental. Um, so it, it makes great music just to kind of drift off to or to have as kind of playing as you're doing other stuff or whatever. It works on a few different levels. Um, it's It's got, uh, it's uh, it sounds to me like uh, almost like a soundtrack to like four different movies. You know, a movie that would have completely different things going on, or maybe an anthology type movie like New York Stories or something, where it's completely different things going on. Um, I didn't uh, fall in love with it, but I thought it was interesting, and uh, I think they would have. Uh, I was waiting for something to match the title. I guess was my only disappointment. I thought the music was pretty good. I thought that the uh, you know it had the sitar thing. The going name on. of the band or the title of the album. The name of the band. Yeah, um, I thought it was going, going to be that. something more out, something outrageous was going to happen, or they were going to do something funny or something, you know, that was going to be like whoa, you know. But they really did because a lot of it's what are you going to do like that when it's instrumentals? But it, you know, they had the sitar kind of Middle Eastern kind of uh, vibe going on, and I think it's the first track. It's been a while since I heard this, by the way. And I heard listened to it three times though, and. Um, uh, it's been like a few days, uh, but they did have the one track that sounded more like an '80s thing with some, with some sense and what is kind of like a lower, you know, on the sense kind of sounding a little foreboding and whatever. Uh, but I enjoyed it. I didn't fall in love with it though, and I was kind of, I, I don't know. I just, the master musicians of Bukaki. I'm waiting for something that's like, uh, you know, going to be like, you know. But it, that never really happened, and. Um, so I would give this. Uh, I would, give, you know, it's 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 decent. I would give it three rainbows. Um, I love that Richard challenges us. I, 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 I fell in love with this record. I absolutely love it. First of all, if you're gonna if you're gonna suggest a record that I absolutely love, can we? Can it not be a two hundred dollar record? I, I mean, this, yeah, we've talked about thing, that before. Possibly doing a whole video expensive. where it's like our favorite. I didn't records. pay two hundred dollars for it. My God, is it really it's, that expensive? It's very pricey, from what I saw. I mean, between one hundred and fifty and two hundred. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Hard uh, to find to stream too. You very hard. To I find. had to listen to some that 
so, uh, a, a version that somebody was nice enough to upload out of their own collection. It was, there was no official. <laughs> they, t- Totem One is, but not Totem Three. Oh, it was on <laughs> Apple Music. Yeah, it was on Apple Music. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I this is this Thanks. is my gem. First of all, the art the artwork is absolutely gorgeous. The, that cover is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, this is I won't say wheelhouse, but this is my jam. This is this is cool shit. I the opener actually the opener the first time I heard I I've also listened to this. I bet I listened to this. I've been driving out to Iowa like three times in the last two weeks, and I bet I listened to it ten times between driving out and driving back. Um, the opener, the first time I heard it, I was like, okay, this is all right. It's all right. But it really just sets the mood for the whole, the rest of the album. And I, I did, I took notes for each song, but <laughs> I don't really know that you need notes for each song. Cause they're all, they all, it's all really one piece of orchestration really is the way I listen to it. Um, there's a lot of down songs that kind of just, set the mood for the next song um I, you know the highlights are i love middle eastern music i love the sitar i love any the drumming like you know middle eastern drumming i too thought this band was from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> when i saw that they were from seattle i was absolutely shocked i i thought they were easily from japan i, I don't know why i assumed that <laughs> I, I don't that's just the way my mind works uh, I'm glad Robert said that because I, I felt stupid when I found out they were from Seattle. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if should I, should I go through each song. I, I I think my highlight, my favorite song might have been uh, Prophecy of the White Camel. There was a little bit more guitar. There was some more, uh, the, the vocals kind of became more featured. Um, the next song, 6,000 Years of Darkness, was beautiful, a little more acoustic-y, though. Um, the Reign of Quality Quantity was really out there. That one was probably the one that stretched it, you know, really different, more avant-garde. Um, I, I, I just, I mean, I, in, in Illuminating the Ten Directions, did I say that one? Uh, I, no. I didn't. Uh, illuminating the Ten Directions, very Middle Eastern vibe to it. Um, man, I, I just... I, I absolutely love this record. And like I said, it, it's one giant piece of music. I, I, I felt all this, you know, the songs don't all go into each other, but they all feed off of each other. And I, I just absolutely adore this record. I, I will give it I, I, four and a half rainbows. I, it's, it's, wow. it's wonderful. And I, I wish I could afford to buy a copy. And I'm going I'm to I'm really to surprised more. to hear you say that it's going for that much because... I certainly didn't did, pay that much. Did you buy it at Reckless Records? No. Um, okay. It, the way I got it, well, I'll talk. I can talk about it. Yeah, it says, yeah. But I, I absolutely love it, um, Richard. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I've never heard of this band. Never heard this record before. Uh, I'm definitely going to check out more of their stuff. Yeah, uh, the black if vinyl. If it's like if it's like this. Bucks. Really? Okay. I yeah. I didn't see it anywhere for less than 150. You might have been looking at the blue vinyl. Oh, maybe. Cool. Well, I mean, I'll pay fifty bucks for this. Definitely. I, oh, I absolutely, Brown, I absolutely love it. For fifty bucks. Jesus, what are you looking at? Discogs. Oh, see, I don't, I don't go to Discogs. I don't buy from there. Hmm. But wow, no, absolutely beautiful. Love it. Thank you very much for the suggestion. It's great. I pay a dollar for it. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> now, I don't hate it that much. No, I don't actually. Don't. I actually don't hate it. Um, but yes, I was. There's not a lot of information to find on this band. It's very minimal, and it was mostly about one guy, and he went to the uh, Art Institute of Seattle, and then he produ- He's a producer, and he did all this stuff. I learned all about him. Um, white, <laughs> and not, I was not not I, from I, Japan. I, not from japan and not middle eastern and i was like um i'm confused so there's that but it, yeah i got that one that um monotonous is a word that comes to mind um because there really was 
a lot of them it was just the same for seven and a half minutes it was just the same thing not that it was a horrible banana in it but i didn't feel like there was a lot coming in but then there were other songs that there was all this weird shit going on it was like what, what the fuck is that noise what, what what's going on now and what's happening here um not a lot of vocals which is fine it was very interesting and obviously this is probably something i never would listen to and it's fun to say bukkake you know it is i mean it is I don't know that I would call them the master musicians of the Bukaki. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know what I would call them. Monotony of the Bukaki. I don't, I, I, I don't know. I, I digress. Uh, but it was very interesting. I absolutely hated the last track. It made my ears bleed. But it was just, it was noise, and it was just too much noise. And um, and also the opening track was a little bit of noise, but not as much noise as the last track that I was just like, this, I feel like this has been making my ears bleed for about 14 and a half minutes now. I think it's only seven, but it, I was, it, was, it was making me sad. And, um, but it was very, take those out, the in-between of the opening and closing, like it was interesting, and it was like, hmm. This is stuff I I don't know that I would ever listen to. So I did not hate it. I did not love it. I wouldn't run out and buy it. Like I said, well, if I saw it for a dollar, maybe. Then I'd send it to Mike. Um, oh, thank you. So if I see it for a dollar, I'll get it. Thank I'll you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, okay, maybe maybe $5. Okay, if I find it for $5, I'll listen <laughs> Uh, but it's still like because it's interesting and so thank you i feel like you challenge us a lot richard um in what and what you give us to to listen to and so thank you for that yeah. um but yeah it's at least three worthy it's not like again it's i don't know i'm shutting the hell up now but hmm. tell us about your bukkake <laughs> Well, this is their, um, I've just looked it up. Actually, this is actually their one, two, three, four, <coughs> sixth release. Wow. Um, and this is part of a series. There's Totem 1, Totem 2, and then this one, Totem 3. And uh, I got this record because I was ordering something from a vendor, and I ordered... I thought I was ordering a mono copy of a particular record and they sent me a stereo version, which I wanted the stereo also uh, of this particular record. Um, but, you know, they said this was mono and, you know, so I sent back to them. And so they said, all right, um, you know, I'll give you 20% off on, you know, uh, a couple records, you know. So I went back and checked out. And I saw this cover, yeah. and I'm like, okay, um, I think I might want this. And I looked it up on YouTube and listened to it, and I went, yeah, I definitely want this. So that's how I ended up getting it. So, yeah, this is Totem 3, and I didn't realize that there was – I didn't realize there was a, a definite theme going on with this record until I listened to Totem 2, because uh, the first song on Totem 3 is called Bardo Sidpa. And then the first song on uh, Totem 2 is Bardo something. And I'm going, okay, Bardo, I know that word. It's, it's, a, it's a word associated with Buddhism, particularly Tibetan Buddhism. And so I started investigating things a little more, and then that's when I began realizing uh, they had this concept going on through this album. These albums, the Totem albums, are a journey through death. Oh. And the Bardo is the first realm of existence that one encounters after death but before rebirth. And so that's why you get this, it starts with like this crackling fire, you know, uh, with the beginning of the song. 
And in, in, in Buddhist philosophy, um, they talk about the end of life and reaching nirvana, whatever, you know, as a fire going out. And then you get these chimes and this droning, a lot of droning through this album. And, and that's because it's yeah. all this whole journey that you're going through. And the droning is your guide so that you don't become lost. Um, yeah. And you've got those forlorn horns blowing every once in a while. Those are like your, your <coughs> like a foghorn for a ship. It's your guide. And then you get into the second song in the twilight of the Kali Yuga. And it's, it's just this really upbeat song it's like a caravan traveling through the desert with camels traipsing along the crests of sand dunes. Um, it's, it's really quite an interesting song, really nice. Um, and Kali Yuga is an Indian demon, uh, so, but it, it's called the Twilight of the Kali Yuga. So we're, the song is kind of indicating that this power of this demon is waning no longer having like influence on you. And then we come to the next track, which is illuminating the 10 directions, Mahur. Well, the 10 directions are north, south, That's east, west, northeast, northwest, etc. You heard but what he called it. Down. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. And, and, and this directions. is very Buddhist. This is very Buddhist because these are all the directions in which the Buddha resides. And Mahur is a place. It's a place in India. There it is where again. The Hindu oh, God of uh, called uh, Dattareya arose. All right, so Dattareya is a god who symbolizes the divine trinity of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. All right, so we're just going through this whole journey here. And then we come to the prophecy of the white camel, Namutare. This is the one with the vocals where the Namutare. Yeah, yeah you know, I like that, that, that particular song there. I like camels. That, that chanting is actually a Taureg chant. And Taureg, they're the wandering people of the Northwest Saharan Desert, Mdu Mukhtar, Tanarwen. These are all Taureg musicians. And the white camel is, it's, you know, who knows? Oh my God, my neighbor is freaking out. Um, <laughs> the. The white camel is kind of a prophecy kind of thing. And, uh, a lot of stuff on that. Uh, but the Native Americans have a white buffalo, you know, uh, in terms of uh, a prophecy. The white camel is kind of a similar sim uh, symbol in North Africa and in the Middle East. Then we got the reign of quantity and the signs of the times. Patriarch of the Iron Age. Um, to me, this song is like wandering in a cave, and there's this disembodied voice. This is the one that has that voice that's like talking, but you can't understand what she's saying. You know, it's just this stuff going on, and it's like she seems to be giving you directions, but you can't quite understand what's going on. So remember, you're, you're, you're in this realm between life and death. You're trying to find your way back to life and rebirth. Um, and so you get these ominous horn sounds again. And then the final song, Failed Future, it reminded me a lot of 1970s Tangerine Dream, kind of that same feel with the uh, uh, electronica going on. Yeah. And then at the end, you've got this really piercing guitar giving this, this climax that creates anxiety and even a sense of danger um and then it builds up with this this crescendo of guitars and violin that actually kind of sounds hopeful like the night is finally ending and and the light can be seen on the horizon you know and so then we come back and then ultimately we are reborn so um their totem albums are all very much on this, they're different journeys, but they all begin with the bardo, you know, where we're, you know, they're, you're being brought into this realm between life and rebirth. Um, Is this the final one in the series? Uh, yes. It's, I don't know if they're doing a totem four. I have totem two. 
um, which is um, I actually like Totem 2 better. Um, I have not yet got Totem 1 um, because all the vendors that have Totem 1 for sale are in Europe. You know, so then you're talking about even if you're paying 30 or 40 dollars for the record, you're adding another sometimes 30 to 40 dollars mm -hmm. for nice. shipping. Um, yeah. and unless they're German sellers, German sellers have the best shipping rates. Uh, but can I get it in Seattle? <laughs> you know, I don't know. You probably could if you went digging around a few Seattle record stores. Um, let because, me yeah, call you. Know what? you know what, though? This is this is one of those albums. Like, if you do start digging around, all of a sudden you're going to find it at Reckless right. Records here in Chicago or, you know, some, it's one of those records. Somebody's going to buy it and be like, yeah, I don't like this. And they're, you're yeah. going to get a good deal on it. Definitely. Well, especially with sure. a name like Bukaki in the title. Again, it doesn't <laughs> going on about everything that Richard just described. That does, does not, not sound have like a anything. band. No, that has Bukaki. I mean, that no. sounds like some punk rock thing. Well, that's, and somebody's going to buy that, thinking it's going to be, yeah. you know, the, the name, Electric Mothers of Fuck or something silly, yeah. and find that the it's not and return is it. A, is a, or the, excuse me, the name of the band is a riff on another band. There is a band called the Master Musicians of Jojoka, and they are from um, not as Morocco. Funny. No. Yeah, it still says Bukaki in the title, though. That's my yeah, point. Bukaki. And they don't sound like yeah, this, this is a journey from birth Bukaki. to death and the realm no, of death, no. and we're going with the white camel between the. Yeah, it doesn't sound like any of that. It's Bukaki. Sounds yeah, like somebody's Bukaki. making a joke. It sounds like a you know it's like. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, when I, I can't think of any of those bands, but you know the bands I'm talking about, like, uh, you know, uh, they have some funny thing in their name or something, and it's you know they're a one joke band and probably some sort of punk no, rock a lot thing. Of their music or is nuts very, nuts much, very much like this. They're 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 not a joke band. They're you know this is the, the kind of music that they uh, produce, and um, uh, they have quite a few records. I would love to find more. Uh, but yeah, they um, they're not too pricey, but they're not going to be twenty or thirty dollar albums. Yeah, what, what are they classified as? Like, if I were to walk into a record store, what do you think they would be under? They're not under jazz. They're not under. World oh music. gosh, um, they're well, under be, They're yeah. experimental, <laughs> experimental ambient. They're under grunge uh, because they're from Seattle. Yes, <laughs> mm, Bukaki grunge. Huh. Their, their no, first I, album is ooh. called The Visible Signs of the Invisible Order, and it's listed under Experimental. Mm. And you can get it for $12. You can get what for $12? Their first album. Their first oh, album. Their first oh, the one, first yeah. album. Okay. Well, I, I, just, I think it's really, I mean, I, I, I really dug it. I thought it was really interesting. I mean, for anyone who likes, you know, Bukaki, middle uh, Bukaki, and mm -hmm. well, well, if you like Bukaki, maybe. I mean, just like long instrumental songs with uh, just. Oh, there is a fourth and... one. It is oh, droning. It zero. is it very is droney. Droning. But it's got that Middle Eastern, like a trance type of I, thing. Yeah, I dig that stuff. I really. Yeah, do. that's what I say. You you do definitely chill out and listen to this, or you mm -hmm. listen yeah. to this while something's going on. You're, it's not the kind of thing oh. you listen to. Smoke is lift. Full, like, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon, and you're ready for, you know, some yeah. intensity. Yeah, I, I put like that. that on when I was driving in the car, and I just. Drove? I had to switch it oh, when I was I driving. Was... I was like, I can't I, listen to this while I'm driving. I loved it. I, I listened to it, I'm telling you, eight to ten times. Wow. I really enjoyed it. That's Did you give us your rating? That's Richard? a lot of Bukaki. Oh, one. yeah, my rating. <laughs> um, uh, oh. Because I do like Totem 2 better, I'll give this one four and a half rainbows. Okay. Also, to so Totem, Totem 2 is five. Yeah, but uh, I, I would say I would consider it's this mean, one that we reviewed as the more accessible one. Is that, and yeah, okay. you know, Totem Two is <coughs> uh, even more challenging, but I think it's even. I think it's I'm going to check it out. Definitely. Totem One, I have not listened to. We've just had so much to listen to lately. I, I just, I, I want to listen to more of their stuff, but you know, we've been listening to a lot of stuff. So, um, but yeah, Totem Two, next on my list. 
All right, yes, we have been listening to a lot of stuff. I listened to 28 yes. albums for uh, 2011. We've got the whole Violent Femmes thing coming up. Mm-hmm. 1984, that's a lot of listening. So for my album, I thought I would just give everyone a break and just uh, give everybody a free pass this week and not have oh. an album. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Right, really? I can go with that. I thought you were going to pick something easy, like you know. No, we just you know, will, you know. Revolver. We will. We will take a vacation as the Go Go's of the their album. But yeah, vacation no, they, uh, all next I teacher. Wanted. And uh, yeah, next will be Mike's. Uh, this is pick. like getting a half day at school. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we have been listening to a lot, and um, we've been yeah, we've got 1984 lot. coming up. The Violent Femmes. <laughs> Who knows what's after that? We will have to figure that out. But yeah, we've uh, so a lot of great things coming up for the uh, vinyl community. Gunkles, uh, yes. don't forget to check out uh, Totem Three from the uh, Master Musicians of Bukaki. Bukaki. And yeah, Bukaki. be sure to look that up so you can have the word Bukaki in your uh, yes. search look history. Look up Bukaki. Yeah. Bukaki. <laughs> Bukaki. It might be listed Rick. under facials. Oh, yeah. Richard. <laughs> First person to use that word. Mm. It was bound to happen. It was. Thank you so much for watching. We are the Vinyl Community Gunkles. Once again, I am Robert Fithin along with... Richard at Calvin Wazoo. <laughs> Craig's Vinyl Blathera. <laughs> Mike at Hubtoons. We will talk to you again next time when we do our uh, uh, top ranking of the top five Violent Femmes albums. Yes. They have like that's... 10 or 11, so that'll be fun. Who knew? Talk mm-hmm. to you then. <laughs>